determined to drag Alan Scott Horn out of his comfort zone. Uh, so I brought a matchman down onto our specimen hunting waters on the River Wye. Um, we do grain bait down here for the barbel, but Alan's been much more accurate than I ever am. And he's had his first put in and he's hooked something small. small job. This is why you want great big baits, you see. <laughs> yeah, you eliminate really like all this that. small stuff. Actually up to the top of the nose that and just little chub. First put in, little chub. I think uh, I think you're right, Peter. I think probably bigger baits will be the way forward, maybe lobworms for me rather than pellets. But right. I think uh, I'll have an odd chuck on maggot just to start with, just to see what's available. I dare say on this river you've uh, not fished with maggots very often. No, you get there's it absolutely teems with um, all sorts of fry, all sorts of year classes, um, small day, small chub, minnows, everything. So we, I don't think I've ever fished maggot down here. No, no. I mean, it, I'm putting on dead maggots, which are a little bit, you know, more big fish friendly type thing. Putting like 10 maggots on a big bunch of, of maggots. I'm not messing around. I've got a size 10 animal, camasan animal look on. So if I do, Hook a barbell. Hopefully, I've got half a chance to land one. We'll just see what happens to start with. I wasn't even able to tell Alan what depth this swim was because um, I've only ever fished it on the lead, um, but it's turned out to be about five and a half foot deep. Um, the it's, it's pretty much full of barbel, so we're hoping he's going to get one. But it's a very interesting technique. The, the flat floats that I made late 1950s, early 1960s, were um, all bolster jobs. And we used them very, very close to the bank. We weren't on poles in those days. We were just on 13-foot rods. And when the Thames was in flood, uh, some of the bream would tuck themselves in very, very tight to the bank. And we would fish these flat floats quite effectively, but not nearly as sophisticated as these that have emanated out of Central Europe, haven't they, Alan? And they've got very clever now. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think when first time I sort of came across flat floats. I know probably one of the early matches were when we fished on River Var in Hungary. Uh, I would say that was probably 2005, and I, I was lucky enough to actually win World Championships using a flat float. We were using like 40 grams size floats on that river on VAR. You don't and get a chance to fish them over here much, do you? No, no. I mean, it's not... It really is out of our comfort zone because we haven't got many matches where we fish on this type of water, really. It, uh, I have a feeling there's an external to up now. Yeah, it's just been, there's a lot of small fish, so I'm going to have to fish a big bait, something like a lobworm or something much bigger than what I've got on, I would say, if I'm going to be patient and try and fish with a bait that I can hook a barbel on. You can see it's just been a, obliterated. Yeah. Try a lobworm. A whole lob. <laughs> whole lob worm. Yeah. I mean, it, even, you know, a chub will, will pick a full lob worm up, so, you know, even that's not bomb proof to probably what's down there, you know. It, I mean, that's, there's quite a lot of flow there. That float, it's 50 gram, and it's it's just about managing to sit in flow. It's still riding a little bit. Very fine tips on them, innit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even that, the smaller fish pecking at it. 
I need, need really to put some out on there. I can sit probably more and wait for a proper bite. We'll see how we go on. I mean, I, I could have probably fished a little bit closer in, but oh, everything's having to go at that. <laughs> can't believe that, you know, a full lobworm like that. I mean, there'd be small chub or something that's attacking it. So you reckon your grain bait is down on that mark, do you? It will not be far off. It will right. be around that area. I mean, th this is another thing. If you do run through and can get bites, it tells you where your ground bait settled. Yeah. I mean, what I can do once once we get some idea of what I can sit with and fish with and try and catch a barbel, I can then try and find out where my ground bait's dropped on the floor, at, at, you know, bed at river as such. These were my old ones from back in the 1950s, early 1960s. Um, they were slightly, or just plain balsa, and they got this sort of harp shape to them. Um, but they were very sh slim, that weighs on, and took plenty of shot. But they were primitive compared to what Alan's fishing today. Uh, they've really become very sophisticated. But of course we had great big thick tops on them, Alan, you know, the, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, fished them double rubber, made sure the line went down the back of them, but very close to the bank. Couldn't have fished like that at all. Didn't even have poles, like I said. I think we were still on cane rods and the like. That was that was mainly for bream fishing on the Thames. Um, they would, the bream in the floodwaters would tuck themselves right in close to the bank in little semi-slacks, and uh, that worked particularly well. We've not been fishing very long, about probably 20 minutes, Peter, and uh, we've, it's become apparent that there's that many small fish there that to actually sit and fish for a big fish, we'd even double lobworm on the, the smaller fish were ripping it to bits. So I've changed to a, an 8 mil banded pellet. Now, of course, when you fish like this, you're fishing with a feeder and probably not putting as much bait in as what I've put in. You'll be packing a feeder quite tight. Well, that might be a barbel there now, but it, it's on that... S oh. Yeah, on that soft elastic, it don't know what it's doing, does no. it? No. They've probably never been hooked on elastic before. No, they don't know what's going so on. So they probably don't exactly know what's happening, that fish. But it's a fair fish. I mean, you know, that... All right, I've not got our strongest bungee on, it's a, uh, it's a, the next size down, the pink bungee. But I, I like it for these type of fish, because if, if they run off downstream, you've got plenty of stretch. I mean, I've managed to get that to go upstream a little bit. That's amazing that it's fighting so soft. But of course, when you pick up with your rod, you know, that, that fish might be still wondering what's happening until they've never been up on elastic sure it before. What I've done, I've mixed some extra pellets in, in some ground bait. I mean, you fish with pellets here all the time, Peter, and I didn't want to panic and start doing things what I didn't know what were happening. So what I've done, I've mixed some extra four mils and a few eight mils in my ground bait, and it's there, it's a barbel anyway. It's a little barbel. And straight away, I've, I mean, I've literally caught one off them two balls that I've potted in. So all that, all that were a threw in, well, probably almost a waste of time, you think. Maybe, you know, if I'd gone with a more specimen approach and, and not balled it in and just cupped with a load of pellets in, maybe it would have been a better ploy than fishing like I started, you know. This right. is, it's not, it's not a match river, is it, this? It's a, no. it's a these river. Are, these are wild fish, Alan. These are wild fish. But, it, you know, it's amazing that, you know, th this fish will never, <laughs> certainly never have been hooked on elastic before. I mean, it, it, 
it's exciting when you up one. I mean, it, this is not probably pulled as hard as what, you know, you'll get some that literally pull pull your arm off. This has been quite quite a kind barbel, really. But it's it's amazing, like that that flat float. All right, it's took me a bit of time to catch one, but I've managed to get one on. It'll be interesting now, cupping pellets, a lot more pellets in the actual mix, whether I'll start hooking more. That's not a bad fish, is it, for a starter? That's a, a starter for one. But uh, that's a nice fish to start with. I mean, I don't know, you know, how big they actually get, but that, that's probably what, four and a half pound, is it? Yeah, that's hopefully you'll get one twice that size. Yeah. So I'll put them in nice and gently into the net, give them a little bit of time to, to recover. I mean, I, I didn't play that for long. I mean, sometimes you can play a barbel. Mm -hmm. You know, if I hook a big one, it might take me, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to get one in. But we'll, we'll go down routine now of, of sort of, if you look at this mix now, you can see how many pellets I've got in that. I've also got gravel and it, the pellets add weight as well to it, so I can cup some more in and then nail a bait over it and see if yeah. we can catch another one. We would put in even more pellet than that. Yeah, We yeah. would really, um, yeah. up to, I don't know how many pellet you can get in, but it looks like as much pellet as grain bait. It isn't probably, yeah. but. I mean, it, to us as matchmen, they're just, that, that don't look too inviting, but obviously barbel, you know, they, they love halibut pellets and, and cramming as many in a, a can into a bowl that I can make solid. It's still got to go down to the bottom, of course. It, uh, it might be the way to catch a field. So I'll uh, we'll cup a, a couple more balls yeah. in and see what happens. Just up to another one now that that were a proper bite that I mean when you're fishing these fast rivers normally when you get a bite off a barbel it's literally a wallop and that I'm sure if I'd have left it it'd have pulled pole down but I managed to strike before it actually got to that point which is amazing me. I mean barbel are a very very aggressive fish but uh, amazing that you know, I fished for a good length of time and not hooked one. And as soon as I started cupping halibuts in, I've already hooked two. So, you know, it just tells you that these pellets, they really want to eat them. This one could be a little bit bigger, Peter. It's just, it went downstream, but it's just, uh, it's just come back up again, so. I suppose this river, when it's been in flood, I mean, there's a post at Cider's here, and you said it were almost at top at post at times. It, yeah. I mean, these I mean. fish, they're used to swimming about in this current, aren't they? This is just nothing for them. No, it's um, a frightening river when it gets in full flood. Um, and certainly, this post here beside us, it's been over the top of that. It's amazing how that elastic is, is actually dealing with them. It's uh, when we catch some some big carp at times. I mean, up to up to twenty pound on ridiculously light gear. Really, I mean, I'm fishing, you know, twenty to Trenton Suplex fluorocarbon. So I've got, you know, it's, it says six pound on it, six pound four. But of course, it's probably a lot stronger than that. I mean, we tend not to to have a gun lines. An O22 fluorocarbon is, is quite heavy, so it probably helps also to keep bait a little bit static. It's a little bit heavier than what normal yes. line is. Yeah. And of course, when you're fishing on river, you're wanting to try and keep your bait static, like you know, other baits that's there. I think if you show it that net. Yeah. It'll, it'll have other ideas about it. And it's amazing that I've sat there all that time after balling it in and the two fish I've caught have, have come like immediately after cupping in and, you know, an amount of pellets. 
Again, it's same ground bait. I mean, the, the ground bait I fed is actually halibut ground bait. It's a census halibut mix. So, you know, the, you'd think that that would have had a, a lot of pulling power, but obviously pellets in the, the form of what they are uh, are more inviting to them than what the ground bait is. That's a little bit bigger. I thought it was a fraction bigger because it did, this one did go downstream. But it's amazing how that elastic's dealt with that fish. Yeah. I mean, how big's that one, Peter? You were probably, you've caught these fish many times and you can probably, you know, estimate what that weighs better than what I can. So, five, five and a bit. I'll give you that one. So we're getting bigger. I want you to do a really big one. <laughs> Fish that Peter, I can tell you. Don't they fight well? These fish are very, very strong. I mean, in this floor. Right, I've had, I've had two quite small fish probably by your standard. I mean, a five pound plus this, fish. This might be a bit better. It's hanging think, out there, isn't it? I think this one's a bit bigger. I played this one slightly different. I've managed to get it to go downstream and, and kept it really on this bank. And as, as long as it doesn't get a, a new wind and and go for the other side with half a chance of landing it. When you show it a net, it will take back off again? Maybe. It's, it's just that far bank that's, that's the problem, really. And it's hooked properly. It's, it's not a massive... It's not that big either, is it? Well, it's difficult to say. It, it felt big when I hooked it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the, again, there's only so much pressure you can put on a fish. And, uh, you know, the two fish that, that did me going across were probably not massive fish, you know, the, but as soon as they get to them rocks, they're, they're in danger of, of breaking you. That's, yep, av just an average size fish. Yeah, average for you, nice for me. <laughs> it is completely different playing them on a pole. I mean, this one I managed to keep it this side at floor. And it's... Uh, it's a lovely fish. I could take my time now. It, it's, it's sort of, I don't think he's going to go back across the other side. I've no, got a chance to no, land. You're there. okay now. It's just that. The only thing that could happen now is probably up pull out of it. But uh, we got five on there or six? Uh, five joints. Five. I mean, it's quite shallow, so, you know, we've not got a lot of water, have we? So, you know, you're not on a, a really long kit. I mean, a, a top four or a top three or hour pole. I keep saying a top four, but it's a top three or hour pole, of course. Takes, yeah. takes care at length of your rig. If you were in a match now, if, but certainly in a world championships, I'd be twitching a little bit, wouldn't I? But probably not as much as when I got that carp in Slo Slovenia last year. <laughs> trying to net a carp on 13 metres of pole with uh, you know, 11 metres of depth were a lot, lot harder than this. I finished up stood on my box, which uh, I'm getting a little bit old for that game, standing on top of a box, but it had to be done. Barbel are, you know, they are a fantastic fish. There's no they doubt. Fight. They the really fight do. hard. And, <clears throat> and this lot down here, they're very feisty on this river. Yeah. Um, it's not just the current, they're very powerful fish down here. Yeah. 
I mean, I've got, you know, O26 main line on, but of course, you know, you're fishing over rocks and things, and, you know, often you don't know what's happened, whether your main line's been caught across rocks and things. And, you know, it's all a, a bit of a nervy, a nervy carry on, really. It's just not. You always want fish to turn to you when you're trying to net them, and this one's just turning away all the time. I could have probably done with another section on. If I got a good gilly, you'd have probably netted this for me, Peter. No, I'm leaving you to your own devices. It's a bonny fish. You'll think that's a little one. No, just just the average <laughs> size out here. Oh, it's slightly bigger. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could tell he was slightly bigger than other two that I've had because of the way he pulled. He did he did pull quite hard, didn't he? What will that one be? Um. Let me see. Oh, that's a decent fish. Oh, well, that's not a bad fish. That's uh, that's a oh, little that's, one. Uh, that's uh, that's seven. They have got massive lips, these fish, aren't they? They're not... Uh, no, look at them, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, great big barbels. You can see how they can find a pellet really easy. With them great big barbels, you can imagine them working across bottom, sifting them out. That's been fantastically educational. The accuracy with which Alan fishes I've got a much better picture of the contours of this. I've only ever fished this swim on the lead, which is very crude. So watching Alan put his flat throat float through there and working it, that's been really interesting. I know a lot more about this swim than I did before. I don't think it's the method. I think the method that we've got down here with flat feeders, big mega uh, method feeders and things like that, packed with ground bait and the bed bait adjacent to it, that's a better system. And we like really smelly baits in this sort of water. But that's been fantastic to see this. And I'm glad I dragged him down here out of his comfort zone <laughs> and got him to find out all about my swim. Uh, fantastic. <laughs>